Now we can put everything together and take a look at the complete psychoacoustic model. And our complete psychoacoustic model for the computation of our masking threshold is given here. So we see that to take as an input the magnitude spectrum of a DFT, for example of size 2048, and it will return the masking threshold as let's say kind of voltage for its first 1025 subbands. So here we are mapping the magnitude spectrum to one-third bark bands with this function that we already seen. We are computing the masking threshold in the bark domain here. We map back from the bark domain. The result is the masking threshold in the linear domain. And we also add the threshold in quiet. So here, for example, uh, is an idealized tone in one subband and its resulting mask, masking threshold, which is mostly its spreading function. So we see we have our tone and we can see that there is the shape of the um, approximation of the threshold in quiet and also we are taking into account the spreading function. So here is this magnitude of the spectrum, this is an idealized tone in one subband and the masking threshold. So we will um, take a chance to explore how we generated this um, plot and we will go and uh, make a revision of all the functions we've seen before and how we are putting and combining them together so we can have this complete psychoacoustic model. Here we have this um, FSPDB that computes the spreading function prototype in the barking scale. It takes as an argument um, half of the sampling frequency and the number of subbands sub in the bark domain. Then we will have this uh, spreading function mat that turns a spreading prototype function into a matrix of shifted version and also converts from dB to let's call it voltage and includes the alpha component. Then we have this masking threshold bar that computes the masking threshold on the bar scale with nonlinear superposition. It will return the resulting a masking threshold on the bark scale and here we see that we compute the nonlinear super, um, superposition we apply the inverse exponent to result again we see the threshold in quiet we convert bark subband frequency to hertz here our auxiliary functions that we um, use to convert from uh, hertz to bark or bark to hertz and we use one approximation from the many that we've seen before. Then we have the mapping to bark mat that constructs a matrix W which has ones for each bark subband and zeros elsewhere. And also the mapping to bark that maps the magnitude spectrum vector from the DFT to the bark scale. And we have the mapping from bark mat that constructs the inverse mapping matrix W inverse from matrix W for mapping back from bark scale. And here finally we have the mapping from bark that um, maps the magnitude spectrum ve uh, vector MT bark in the bark scale back to the linear scale. So we've seen already all these functions and we see that we can use, uh, for example, the um, mapping to bar. So we are going to test now some of the functions and then test all of them combined into a complete psychoacoustic model. So here we have some parameters. So we are going to use a sampling frequency of uh, 32 kilohertz. Here we have the Nyquist frequency, in this case is 16 kilohertz. We can use, for example, the exponent for nonlinear superposition of the spreading functions alpha equals to 0 0.8. Also 0 0.6 is a very common exponent. We are going to use 64 subbands in the bark domain and 2048 subbands for the FFT. So here we are computing the uh, matrix W. So here we have the bark subbands and here we have the uniform subbands and here we are plotting 
the, met um, the matrix W for uniform to bark mapping as an image and we are using these parameters here and we have this resulting W then we can also have the W inverse and now we have here the uniform subbands and the bark subbands in this axis then we have here the spreading function prototype it is given here then we can uh, combine many spreading functions shifting them and we'll have the spreading function matrix and it's given here so we have this uh, matrix spreading function matrix as an image and then we can also test uh, using some audio signals first we will use white noise so here we have, we have one second of a white noise and then we are computing the mask threshold in the bark domain and then the masking threshold in the original frequency domain so we see that we take for example the spectrum we take the spreading function matrix we have the alpha coefficient we have the sampling frequency and the number of subbands and here we are plotting the masking threshold for white noise here we have a magnitude in db and here we have our fft subbands now what we can also do is to test the um, this model using an idealized tone in one subband and the, for example the tone of the FFTD band uh, 200 so here we are generating this um, test signal and it sounds like this so we have this um, tone in one subband the FFT band of number 200 then we can compute the masking threshold in the bark domain and then we can map it back from bark and this is what we have here so we see that we generate using the mapping to bark and then the masking threshold bark that takes this spectrum the spreading function matrix alpha simply frequency and the number of subbands like we did before but now we are using a tone at the FFT subband 200 and here we have we see that it combines the spreading function it combines with the masking threshold and this is the resulting masking threshold in this case so if we would have more tones then it would combine the spreading functions in different FFT subbands and also take into account the masking threshold so with this we can combine all the previous functions that we've been working on into a complete psychoacoustic model that we can use for calculating masking thresholds and the idea is that if we have signals that are below this masking threshold we will not be able to hear them they still exist they still have energy they are present in our signal but we will not hear them because of the characteristics of our hearing system and we can take advantage of these characteristics of our hearing signal uh, system to for example uh, compress audio signals so we can remove everything that our ear um, will not uh, listen to and many audio coding algorithms and strategies they take advantage of these um, masking effects and other properties of our hearing system to make audio signals smaller so we can easily transport and distribute very very practical in communication applications